Okay, so in this video, what I wanna do is help you identify if we have a factor of a polynomial. Because typically when we've been dealing with factors of numbers, you know, composite numbers, it kind of makes sense because we can do the division rather easily. But when we get to polynomials, students start to make a little disconnection as far as understanding what is a factor and what is not a factor. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with just kind of breaking down our understanding of factors. And there's really two ways we can look at factors of a number. So for instance, three is going to be a factor of 12. The reason why three is a factor of 12 is because three evenly divides into 12 four times. Because three times four is going to be 12, and then you do a little division here, and you can see the remainder is zero. So a factor is going to be obviously, like for numbers, it will be a number that evenly divides into another number. And that's gonna work for variables and expressions as well. If something evenly divides when you have a remainder of zero, then you know you have a factor. Now, another way we can think about factoring, which kind of extends into our polynomials, is by rewriting an expression as a product. So for instance, if I have three divides into 12 four times, I can also rewrite this as three times four is equal to 12, right? So if you can rewrite 12 as a product of its two factors, then these two are going to be factors of 12. Now, this is something that we kind of start off when we're dealing with polynomials, because if you want to identify your factors, you can factor them, right? And with composite numbers, you know, we did that with like the, you know, factor tree, breaking it down into a product of its primes. And then with polynomials, we did factoring. And that's where a lot of students, I think, kind of get the confusion as far as understanding what they're trying to do, which is actually factor the polynomials. So if you I want to identify if something is a factor, the best thing you can not possibly do is actually just factor. If I want to know is x plus 2, right, is that a factor of this polynomial? Well, what I'm going to do then is actually try to divide. So the first and easiest thing to do is actually factor your numerator. So in this case, hopefully you recognize we have four terms. So therefore, the factoring technique I want to use in this case is going to be grouping. But look for factoring out the GCF. Look for factoring trinomials, depending on what your polynomial is. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my first two terms, and I'm going to factor out the GCF of my first group and my second group. So my first group, I can factor out a 2x squared, and that's going to leave me with a x plus 2. Over here, I can't really factor anything else except out a 1. So I'll factor that out, and then I'll be left with an x plus 2 all over x plus two. Now again, you might see that something's coming up, but let's just kind of factor this evenly here. Um, here, I can factor out the x plus two because they both share it. So that's gonna leave me with a x plus two times a two x squared plus one all over a x plus two. Now, if I was going to go ahead and use division, what you would see is this evenly divides into the numerator, right? So therefore you can see without actually doing any division that x plus two evenly divides into that numerator because by factoring it out, you can see that x plus 2 is a factor, right, of x plus 2. It would divide out, leaving you with a simplified answer with no remainder. And that's the key. We're not going to have a remainder when we divide the x plus 2. So again, first, when you're trying to identify something as a factor, try to say factor it and simplify it first. Now the next technique is, if, let's say you can't factor this, right, or if you have a polynomial that's non-factorable. Well, then we can look to division, right? And just like we do division, just like I showed with 12, we can do division by using long division. And with polynomials, we can also do something with synthetic division. To make the video go a little bit better than with long division, I'm gonna go ahead and use our synthetic division. So just remember when we're using synthetic division, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take the set our denominator, our divisor equal to zero to get our, what we call our value K, which is going to be four. Then we're gonna take the leading coefficients of our dividend, which again is one. We don't have an x squared, so we can rewrite that as a zero x squared. So we'll have a one, zero, negative seven, and negative six. Now again, synthetic division is a little bit more preferred because we're gonna be doing addition and multiplication to divide compared to long division, which would actually be dividing and subtraction if you look at the long division algorithm. As I go into this, again, my last term is gonna tell me what the remainder is when I'm doing division. So I bring down the one, one times four is four, 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 7 plus 16 is going to be a positive 9. 9 times 4 is going to be a 36, and that gives me to a positive 30. So that is my remainder. So you can see those rather quickly, right? If I was to do long division, it would take a little bit while. And I want you to be able to check if something is a factor rather quickly. So if it's non-factorable, look to using division. And preferably, look to use synthetic division over long division for speed and typically accuracy as well. But so you can see here, this has a remainder, so x minus 4 is not a factor 
of this polynomial. Now, the last technique that I want to get into is instead of actually factoring, instead of using long division, the last technique is to use the remainder theorem. And what the remainder theorem says is if x, x plus k is a factor, then f of k is going to equal 0. Then what I can do is if I can plug in k into the polynomial, into my numerator, and get 0, then we know we have a factor. So what I'm going to do is take my numerator, which will be a polynomial function, and I'm just going to plug in k. Well, in this case, my k is just like the k we did over here. Set it equal to 0, and that's going to be my k. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to plug in this negative 1 to the 35th power minus negative 1 to the 14th power minus negative 1 to the 5th power plus 1. Now to do this, it's very important to understand. It doesn't matter what the number is, but you need to take care of if it's positive or negative. Anytime you take a negative number, raise it to an odd power, it's always going to be negative. Whenever you take a negative power and raise it to an even power, it's going to be positive. So if I take negative 1, multiply by itself 35 times, that's going to give me a negative 1. If I take negative 1, multiply by itself 14 times, that's going to give me a positive 1. Now, it might be easier to also write parentheses around this just so you can recall your signs. This is going to become a negative 1 plus 1. So now I have a negative 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, and hopefully you can see here that's going to equal 0. So without doing any synthetic division, without doing any factoring, you can see by applying the factor theorem, I'm able to determine that x plus 1 is indeed a factor of this polynomial. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I have many more examples of me actually working through these examples inside of Classroom in the playlist down below. Cheers.